Hello, ladies. I'm going to say good morning. You know what? Janice did tell me what time it is for you guys, but I, I just don't know. So I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, hello, um, and welcome, you guys. This is such an honor, and I'm so excited to be able to um, come meet you guys and say hello and share a little bit of my tips and tricks when it comes to uh, your time management. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I think I can see a couple people on. If you're here, please go ahead and comment and say hi. Um, I would love to meet you and get to know you guys a little bit better. But my name is Kristen Miller, and I am a crown princess um, who lives in Boston, Massachusetts. I live here with my husband and our 22-month-old daughter. Hi, Jade. Thank you. Um, and I've been a Senegence distributor since March of 2017. So I just had my five-year anniversary back in March. And it has been a whirlwind ride, as I'm sure many of you guys have experienced over the last few years um, in this business of finding more out about myself, about my um, my passions, my getting my confidence up, all kinds of things. So Senegence obviously is such an amazing blessing. Um, when I was asked to train you guys, um, I was allowed to choose my own topic. And honestly, um, I'm going to train you guys today on one of my favorite topics, which is time management. So... Um, this is something that has been super important to me at every stage of my business. When I first signed up with Senegence, I was back um, living in another state. I was uh, single. I guess I had a boyfriend who's now my husband, but I was single, and I was working a very intense full-time job. Um, and then I moved uh, to another state to chase that same boyfriend who's now my husband, um, and I got an even more intense job. And so with the time commitment that my full-time career was taking, it became really important for me to understand time management and just being able to make the most of the time that I have and be able to use a calendar and um, to kind of learn a few tips and tricks along the way. And then fast forward to now. So now I am a um, full-time business owner, full-time stay-at-home mom, and it's just another version of... Um, of time management that I've had to learn. You guys are asking if I, if you can hear okay. Let's see. Hopefully you can. Um, I, I'm i not sure if there's a sound issue. I, it, everything looks good on my end, so I hope everything looks good on yours. If you guys could send me some plus signs, some hearts, um, if you can hear me okay, that'd be great. Let's just make sure. I think we're Think we're okay I'm gonna keep rolling and if you guys tell me you can't hear me um, we'll have to work on a plan B so um, with that like I mentioned I'm home now with my daughter and so I really have to be very very um, particular with my time I have to be able to thank you Lisa I have to be able to utilize it um, make money obviously and um, and then go you know mom full-time so I wanted to share with you guys some of my tips for doing that Number one, I absolutely, my number one tip is I recommend having some sort of planner. So this is actually my current planner, and the reason for that is because this, um, I know we just got the new Senegence planners. I'm not sure if you guys have those or not, but this is my current planner. I use a planner called the Happy Planner, and I absolutely love it um, because I feel like I need to see it all laid out. Some of you guys might use a Google Calendar. Some of you guys might use your, the calendar on your phone. Um, whatever you're using, as long as it's working for you, keep using that. For me, it's paper and pen, and I do my best work with paper and pen. So I'm still a note taker, and I still like to jot things down, scribble things, sticky notes. That's kind of my um, my best uh my best way to work. But I recommend having some sort of calendar, right? Because if you don't know what you're even up to, how are you supposed to know what you're doing and when you're doing it and how to do it well? So the first thing I have for you guys is um, to get a planner and um, or to get a planning uh, an option, whether that's electronic or paper. And then, of course, we have to look at what we're filling it with. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the Sun Essential calendar. Joni has trained us many times here in the U.S. on how to use the Sun Essential training calendar. Um, but if you haven't, the activity is very simple. You can take any planner of any kind, and all you're going to do is you're going to look for um, kind of the day, the daily planner, and, and look at the hours that you have available within a day, okay? And so let's just say the average person has between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. available. The um, activity that I want you guys to do is I want you to take your planner each week. You might do this on Sunday nights. You might know in weeks in advance what your schedule looks like. Again, whatever works best for you. But I want you guys to go ahead and I want you to cross off any of the hours within a day and throughout the week that you are completely unavailable to do anything with your um, with your business. So 
That's the first thing. And the reason for that is because if you know that your kids have a um, soccer practice or swimming lessons or that you go to church or whatever it is, you have dinner every night at your in-laws on Friday night, um, you know that you're completely unavailable. So just put a big old X through any of those time slots that you know you cannot put any effort towards your business. Um, that's the first step. And then the second step would be to circle any of the times where you do have some time available. Um, so like right now, for example, I have um, our babysitter is here. She just took my daughter to her little music class. And so I've got about an hour um, or so to get some work done. So I would put a big old circle on Fridays at 10 a.m. Uh, my time um, because I know that I'm able to do some work during that time. Once you can see your availability, that is when you can plug and play in terms of what you're able to accomplish during those time slots that you've circled. And it's also really good perspective to realize that you probably have more time available than you think right? Because as moms and as women, we're multitasking and we're trying to get everything done and we're taking care of all these other people besides ourselves. And at the end of the day, we're exhausted. And we look back at our calendar and we say, gosh, I have no time to do my business. When in reality, if you do this process with the X's and the circles, you're going to start to see that you do have little increments of time, half hour here, an hour there, where you can start to plug in some extra work. So first thing first is get your planner. Second thing is know your schedule. Do your X's and O's um, and be able to see when you're available. Now I want you guys to think about what you're going to do with that time that you are available, right? Because how many times, drop me some hearts in the comments or, or even a comment below, um, if you have ever sat down with some time to work and thought, oh my gosh, where should I start? Or oh my gosh, I have too many things to do. I don't even know where to begin guilty, right? And then I end up scrolling. I end up um, looking at pictures of my daughter. I end up calling my mom. And all of a sudden, that one hour that I circled that I was supposed to get something done in, it's completely over and I've done nothing. So it's important to know what you're going to do when you sit down to do it. So I want to give you guys a simple rule to follow. It's called the five by five rule, okay? Five by five. So the first thing that you um, can do is you're going to split up this half an hour. If it is a half an hour or if it's an hour, great. You're going to have more time. You could even do five by 10 in that regard. Um, but five by five is a, is a rule for your kind of your 30 minute work time. And you're going to um, spend five minutes doing each of these five activities. So the very first activity I want you guys to do, number one, is connecting with your audience. So this is going to be kind of the fun first five minutes of your of your half an hour because you're going to go ahead and you're going to scroll your social media and you're going to comment and engage with women um, and men that you see in your feed. And you're just going to say things like, okay, so for example, Facebook tells us when it's people's birthday, right? So one of the very first things I do every single morning is I go into Facebook, I see whose birthday is it today, and I send them a birthday message. And it's very simple. It's just, you know, hey, Laura, it's, uh, you know, not, well, if it's a private message, fine. But usually it's just even a post on their Facebook wall. Hey, Laura, happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing day and that your family spoils you. Um, and that's it. Sim something simple. You're just engaging with people at this point. Um, a lot of times I like to go into Instagram and if I had done a recent post or a recent reel and there's some comments and things that I haven't responded to, I go ahead and I connect and I comment there. I'll even go so far as to click on some of the profiles of the people who have commented and responded to my Instagram content and I'll go to their page and respond and comment to their uh, content as well. Same thing can be said for your own Facebook groups. If people are commenting and liking there, go to their personal Facebook page and make a comment on something. Five minutes engaging, okay? Five minutes connecting. The next five minutes you're going to be working on is your follow-ups. Okay, there is an entire hour's worth of training we could do solely based on follow-ups. I will save that for another day, but um, you have to absolutely make sure that you're allotting time for following up because you don't want your customers to get lost in the shuffle. New customer acquisition is so incredibly hard, right? It's hard to find new customers. It's hard to get them to say yes. It's hard to have them make that purchase. Once you have them, you have got to make sure that you keep them. And so that's where your follow-up will um, really, really move the needle in terms of um, reorders, in terms of signing new distributors, in terms of booking new um, events and demos with them all happens in follow-up. So I want you guys to spend five minutes um, during your allotted times to follow up with customers. And the follow-up messages that I send, you know, you typically will want to make sure that you ask a question. Um, you'll typically want to make sure that you engage in something other than just feeling kind of spammy, so to speak, with Cinegents. But, you know, hey, oh, hi, Janice, you're here. Good. Okay. 
Hey Janice, it's Kristen. I'm just following up to see how you liked your tinted moisturizer. Um, I'd love for you to send me a selfie of it if you're if you've worn it already. How are you enjoying your vacation? And that would be ending it with a question, asking her to send me a, a selfie or to post a selfie in my Facebook group. And then of course I want to know how she liked it. It's a very simple message. It goes a long way and you really will start to have um, a deeper conversation with her. Once she responds, she's going to say, I'm loving my vacation. My tinted moisturizer is perfect for it. Um, I haven't got a sunburn at all because of it and I can't wait to try something else new. And then you go from there. Awesome. What does your wish list look like right now? Well, my wish list, I, I really want to try a shadow sense. I really want to try a powder, whatever, whatever the list looks like. And you can say to her, awesome, I would love for you to get that wish list at 30% off or 20% off or whatever your hostess rewards are. I have a couple slots coming up in June. Would you like to book one of them? And that leads you to your booking. So following up is just like opening the door and letting yourself have a path to get to the end of the street, so to speak, okay? The next five minutes you're gonna spend on your content. So making sure that you've got something going in your social media accounts today, or even so far as um, an email campaign. I'm not sure what the rules are for you guys on email campaigns, but we send a lot of emails here in the US. Um, an email campaign, uh, creating a graphic, you know, doing a few, scheduling a few posts in your Facebook group, but spending five minutes on your content creation, whether it be for that day or maybe you're really on your A game and you're planning ahead, okay, and working on some content for the upcoming days. But five minutes on your content. Five minutes spent, um, on the opportunity, right? So how many women have you offered the opportunity to this week? What were their responses and how can you, um, continue to have those conversations with them and really, Excuse me, I felt that sneeze coming. We have, it's summer, it's almost summer here and the allergies are terrible, so excuse me. Um, but offering that opportunity, following up with maybe people who had told you no a few months ago, hey, I wanted to circle back with you um, and see you know, how you're doing um, and if you've given any more thought to joining me in this business. I know the summertime for us is a great time to be able to make a little bit of extra money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera five minutes on your opportunities and then five minutes in bookings. And honestly, your five minutes in bookings and your five minutes on um, follow-up probably end up coinciding because you're a lot of times you're going to get to a booking through a follow-up message. So you can definitely do those back to back and make that a 10 minute time window. Um, but there you have it, 25 minutes. You've done all kinds of amazing engagement conversations, content creation, um, and you're ready to rock and roll. And that's what you can do with 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes. So that would be my first tip. My next tip, you guys, is probably an unpopular opinion. So I mentioned earlier that um, we're women, we're multitaskers, we've got long to-do lists, we're trying to do, you know, baby on the hip, cooking dinner, sending a voice memo, all these things. My best tip and something that I've learned in the last um, probably 18 months or so through personal development and through trial and error is to actually stop multitasking. I know, unpopular opinion, right? We live in kind of a world where it's hustle culture all the time and it's how much can you get done and I got done more than you and my to-do list is shorter than yours and da 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 um, My unpopular opinion is to stop multitasking. So I can speak uh, from the heart on this that when I'm with my daughter, I try to be with my daughter. I am not looking to make comments on put people's posts or respond to messages or do any work really at all. I want to focus on her, but when I'm working, I want to be working. And that comes back to why that Sun Essential calendar works so well is because I can see the time slots in my day where I can dedicate to work and I can see the time slots in the day where I can dedicate to family or home or, you know, something else that's a priority of yours. So I think the concept of multitasking, there's actually quite a few statistics out there that basically tell you that you are becoming so much less efficient when you try to multitask that you're giving about 70% of yourself to every single task versus being able to give 100% of yourself to a task. And so I think for that purpose and that reason only, I implore you guys to work on not multitasking, not trying to accomplish six things at once, and really honing in on the task that you're doing at the time that you're doing it. If you're trying to spend time with your family, spend time with your family. If you're trying to work, work. Um, and this definitely is a muscle that you have to kind of build up because when I first started this concept, it was very difficult. I would hear ping, 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 ping on my phone. I would immediately want to check to see what it was. I would immediately want to respond. A customer wants to place an order. I would get excited. And all of a sudden I'm back to multitasking versus when I put my phone away, I stick it in the drawer, I leave it upstairs, I put it on the charger, I walk away from it. Um, a, I come back to my phone during that half an hour time and I actually have a lot of work to catch up on. So I'm not 
kind of pondering what I should be doing or in the scroll hole. Um, and also B, I just spent some really good quality time with my husband, my family, my daughter, whatever it was. And so once you stop trying to do all the things at the same time and you start designating specific time frames to each task that you want to do, I promise you guys, you will feel much better, number one. And number two, you will become much more efficient and better at what you're trying to accomplish. And then my very last tip for you guys, my third tip is utilize the timer on this weapon that we have right here, which is our phones. So if you're looking to accomplish a lot of tasks within a certain time frame, and this goes for household tasks or life tasks, um, set a timer on your phone, set a 15 minute timer, and you will be amazed what you can get done with a timer when you know that the time is ticking away. Um, and again, this is great for laundry, dishes, vacuuming, you name it, but it's also great for our Senegens business as well because a lot of times, again, you can get distracted or someone messages you when you're trying to write an email and then you stop writing the email and you go to the message and it just kind of ping, ping, pings. You're just basically bouncing around. If you set a timer on your phone, 15 minute time slot, you get as much done in the, those 15 minutes as you can. The second you hear the ding from the timer, you move on to whatever is next on your list. So if, you're, if your next task is to sit up, put your phone down and walk away, then you're done until the next time you have um, that circle of window available. Or sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm really in the zone. I'm really getting a lot done here. I'm going to set another 15 minute timer and see if I can complete this task during the next 15 minutes. And you guys will be amazed at what you can do with 15 minutes and when you're being timed, okay, right? Because you always have good intentions of just doing something for 15 minutes, but if you're being timed, then you know that the timer is going to go off in 15 minutes. So those are some of my time management tips, you guys. I'll recap real quickly for you. Number one, start with some sort of organizational piece, whether that be a planner, um, your Google, Google Calendar, etc. Number two, do the set essential training activity of the X's and O's. See when you're really truly available um, and when you're completely unavailable, right? And then number three tip was the five by five rule. Spend five minutes on all five tasks. Um, and that's about a 25 to 30 minute time frame, which is great because that's usually about as much time as we have sometimes. And then um, number four tip is to stop multitasking. Dedicate yourself to whatever it is you're focusing on at that moment. And my last tip, number five, is to set the 15-minute timer and see how much you guys can get done in that time frame. So with that, you guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, and thank you to Janice for the invitation. Wow, what an honor. And um, I'm so grateful for it. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them here. Um, I'm always available if you have any um, DMs you want to send my way or thoughts and questions there as well. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or evening. I can't tell what time it is, but I'm going to have a great rest of my Friday. Thanks.